welcome to March. I absolutely love spring. If you could not tell by my emails I've been sending out, uh, spring and summer are my favorite, my favorite seasons of the year. And I'm really excited. If you are new to teachingwithbraythefrog.com and you're just jumping in in March, this is a great time to leap in. We are starting off with some Celtic lessons. The first one is actually um, the a sticks lesson, which we've been doing quite a few of those in February. So your kids should be, if you've been following those lessons, they should be really comfortable with sticks lessons. Um, and you have now this vocabulary of using rhythm and beat and how to create rhythm patterns. So it's just really fabulous. The first spring lesson in March was engine, engine, and choo-choo. And uh, we'll go through, but first I'm going to do an overview. So this video chat is an overview of the whole month, month of March. It'll probably take about an hour, and you are welcome to fast forward to the parts that you want to uh, see, I will do it in sequential order of the lesson plans throughout March. There's an easy way to see what those lesson plans are. So you can see them in front of you, but you can also see them any time of the year by clicking on the calendar. And where is the calendar? At teachingwithfraythefrog.com. Click on the dashboard um, button, which you see over here. And then you scroll to the bottom of that page, and you'll find the word calendar. Uh, they always say calendar events, but I think it just now says calendar, and it tells you that that's where the lesson plans and the video chat schedule is located. Then when you get to the calendar page, look for the calendar. It should pop up with the, the month that we're in at that moment, but if you want to look ahead or look um, in the past to see what was leading up to this, or let's say you had a a music program or something that you need to do or something that you just wanted to do that had nothing to do with any of my lesson plans and you're wanting to see where we're at what have we done before where are we going you can click on this calendar and it's difficult um, you know right here you're going well I can, all I can see is numbers all you have to do is just click on that little title so if I click on that title that I just put a dot on it will pop open with the lesson kind of the the focused piece that's during that and I tend to teach with taking a piece of music and digging deep and because I was a traveling teacher who needed to be very efficient with what I planned and with what I had to carry with me I oftentimes use the same lesson and just a variation per grade levels now that seems kind of monotonous to us the teacher but if you're trying to do it all, which most of us are, it really saves you and your kids are not as familiar. Remember, if they had this um, engine engine, the last time they saw it was a year ago, a grade earlier, and you were not able to go as far as advanced with them. So it's really great learning and it's, it's really what we're learning in our educational circles now is rather than giving a whole bunch of stuff that the, that's like an inch deep shallow learning is that we find one um, one thing and we dig deeply and the student retention of learning is far better much deeper they uh, that enduring understanding happens when you dig deep and they really explore that rather than doing a whole bunch of surface things that we understand but they're just getting little samples so everybody has their teaching style that's the way I approach it and that allowed me to be a great teacher with my young kids but still be able to teach my high school my junior high or my choir or my bell choir or whatever I have going on all right so once you pop that open all you do to close it is a little X in the box and the first spring lesson is engine engine which we just talked about briefly and then um, the one that is set up for this coming week is Patty Works on the Railway. I love Celtic music and I also love jazz. And in March, we start out with Celtic lessons. And I threw in an extra one. Um, if you look at the lesson plans, you'll see there's a St. Patrick's Day lesson. So if you have the luxury of seeing your kids twice a week um, or more, then you probably have time to go ahead and do that St. Patrick's Day lesson. It focuses on teaching the kids a very basic um, introductory jig step. And I had to 
even simplify it more for my youngest kids and keep it short. And then with each grade level, they, you know, we would add just a little bit more complexity to it. And with little ones, if you do that lesson, um, you know, if you sit here or feel that frustration level in the room, don't keep it, just stop and go, let's hop to the music. Uh, New England Folk Dancing Masters has a great piece called Jig, and I love everything they have. So if you have, have that in your closet, just pull that out. Or it's so easy to download Celtic music from, um, you know, whatever your favorite source is, iTunes or another source, then you can use that Jig step with that as well. The details are in the St. Patrick's Day lesson. But for next week, we dig deep on Patty Works on the rail, Railway. And we'll go into that in detail in a minute. Spring Lesson Plan 3 is St. Patrick's Was a Gentleman and Harvest Home. We'll touch on it more later. And then we go into a scat singing lesson. Oh, I think I, I've got the wrong piece up. That should actually be the Flying Jazz Kitten, Fray the Frog and the Flying Kitten book. And then the following week, the lesson is um, the scat singing lesson. And if you would like to copy those outlines directly to your calendar, um, I got hooked on Google Calendars when I was traveling between the five buildings and my two kids were in high school. I've shared this story before, so I won't bore you with it again. But the directions are there on the calendar page. So if you look at what looks like a video clip at the top of that page, it's actually a slideshow that you can just scroll through and see the instructions of how to copy my event right to your calendar and then you could just change the date so it matches your schedule and that makes it very easy to put in your plans. And here's the details. I'm not going to go through that now but these kind of details are on the calendar page. So spring lesson plan one is engine engine. And you saw that the monthly bonus was the engine engine PowerPoint. It looks like this. I think the color blue might be a little different on the other one, but the teacher slides are these light blue slides. So just a, a heads up, if you are conscious or required to pull in math sta um, standards into, into your music classroom, the sticks lessons do it so naturally while you're teaching music and all you have to do is document it and I have figured out the codes for you. I have documented the codes for you so if you are a LilyPad Lifeline member you'll have full access to that digital download and when you download it the codes are in a chart right at the bottom and you can print that off and hand it to your supervisor and tell them I implemented or I incorporated the Common Core State Standards for Math. Now some states as I have discovered such as West Virginia your standards are renamed, but they are actually um, perfectly aligned with the Common Core state standards. They've just changed the code a little bit, and they've called it a different name than Common Core, but it's identical to the Common Core state standards. So it's already done for you, and you just put in the, you know, the lingo that West Virginia has adopted for the same thing. But the code is there. So just a heads up on that. Any stick sequence, since I've done this in detail in previous um, video cast, I'm not going to go into detail now. I just want to show you what's there and an overview for the new folks. The stick sequences, you play the singing game one lesson and then in a different day you mix it up and you do solve the mystery song so that the kids don't know what that mystery song is. And it's, it's one of these singing games that you've played in the past. And then it leads you through a craft stick lesson, and their reward is to get to play the game again. So I have all these suggested questions that you can ask the kids, and that's a really key part of incorporating Common Core. And frankly, I found the learning of music and their understanding was very rich when I started asking these questions. Not only rich in uh, pulling in math, but rich in understanding how music comes together and seeing the patterns. So as you can tell, this is telling you step by step exactly what I would ask the kids to do. So this will, if you download the PowerPoint, just follow exactly what it's saying. This is what you're saying to the kids who can chant box two by yourself. You display that in front of them. You choose somebody to do that for you. 
and then you ask the class to echo them. It's very empowering, very affirming when you choose a student, especially somebody who might be lower functioning, but you know they can do this successfully, a special needs kid, or just anybody. And when you say, oh, that was wonderful, John, can everybody um, chant box two like John did? Boy, John just puffs up. He feels so good. So and it's just a great thing to do. When you move into the echoing of the melody, you are going to want to be a little more selective on who you choose because this is a tougher thing to get right the first time. But we're leading them through looking for patterns in music, which also corresponds with math. So we might as well articulate that in what we're doing. So I'm going to flip through these. I will have individual um, uh, PowerPoint or a uh, video clip just for Engine Engine and Choo Choo train on the Watch and Teach page. Uh, one thing I will notice, note that in the lesson plans, if you haven't already done Engine Engine Choo Choo, I included Choo Choo train as part of the K1 uh, because it's kind of a follow a leader thing at the grades two and three. That seemed a little bit possibly babyish for them, and so I left Choo Choo off and went into an extension of Engine Engine, and it was some movement and um, singing singing Engine Engine or chanting Engine Engine number nine in a round with incredible strategies that make it easy for kids to do and fun that Cheryl Lavender came up with and um, put in her Round the World book. So I included that as well. And then this is just an overview of Common Core State Standards that would be included when you do the lessons as directed through uh, the lesson plan. There's what that chart looks like. And we're ready for spring lesson plan two, which if you're following me right along, if you're able to, don't feel bad if you don't. These are can be used two ways. They can be used as that resource when you need it, and or they can be used sequentially, just like I have them laid out. Now, you'll notice that sometimes my lesson plans will say, um, there'll be a note at the top of the lesson plan, and it will say, if you have not done some previous name lesson, then stop, go back to that one so that this makes sense for the kids. And then you could skip that one. Right now, with Patty Works on the Railway, this is one of those you could just pull out of the air because you want to do some Celtic music, and you need a lesson, and this resonates with you, and it will be fine. There's no, you don't have to sequentially have a setup for this. Um, I did it so that lesson plan three, this lesson helps prepare them for lesson plan three, but again, spring lesson plan three could be independent on its own, but they work really well together as well as a follow-up. So lesson plan two, um, comes from, and it's an adaptation of Irish, out of Irish Beat. If you love Celtic, Celtic music and you want to bring in a Celtic music resource that will work in your classroom, I'm in love with Irish Beat. And there's two reasons. One is one of the co-authors of this actually traveled with, I believe, the River Dance group as a musician. Um, now, if I have that wrong, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And the people involved in this really made sure it was authentic. And I'm just, I'm such a believer when you can do authentic music, do it. That is the best thing. Not something that somebody else tried to do in that style, but authentically. So the recordings are fabulous. They are great Celtic recordings. Um, and the tips on how to play the Celtic instruments are legit and they even have video clips that you can go out and and get through Hal Leonard and I believe those are free to use and they're part of the, the CD so you can see a demonstration of how to play these instruments as well as read about how to play them and you'll see that in a minute. There are eight lessons that could easily extend into two each um, because there's so much depth to them and of course with your kindergarten kids you're going to going to simplify that down, choose one instrument, and stick with that. And then the older the kids are, this could go all the way up into your fifth, sixth graders. Actually, you could do this with middle school if you have the instrumentation. Um, and then because the music's so great, and you could layer it. 
So lots of opportunities here. So how I would begin with Patty Works on the Railway is first you teach the jig rhythm with bo body percussion. Now notice in this notation it says right, left, left, right, left, left. Um, I strongly urge you to do establish a mirror movement um, with your kids. And what I mean by that, if you've not done that before, kids, especially the, the young kids that are struggling with right and left, and actually the older kids too, visually, if they're having to translate, okay, she's using her right hand, so it looks like it's over there, so I have to use this hand, it gets all messed up. But if I just establish that in my music class, I'm always going to mirror the actions, then all they have to do is just play the mirror game in anything, and it works. So as the teacher, I would make this opposite, and I would do left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right. But to the kids, they'll mirror it, and when they mirror it, it will be right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Now, anytime that a we, uh, students of any age, we chant and kinetically move or touch at the same time, we have greater success. So, um, Tom Anderson is one of the writers of the lessons, and I'm not sure who's responsible for the rushers and sausages, rushers and sausages, but that's the chant that they chose, which kids love on words. And you can talk about what is a rusher. And in Ireland, rusher is a, is a nickname for bits and pieces of bacon. So this is actually bacon and sausages. But we're going to say rushers and sausages, rushers and sausages, and tap that. As a teacher, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, and as a, then the student will do it right, left, left, and make sure you say it as right, left, left, right, left, left. Um, all right, so make sure they can do that and be chanting. Then you're going to teach the dotted quarter note accented B in 6 8 time. And this is preparing them for using a bovron, um, a bovron if you have one, and if you do, that's fabulous and there's a video clip that you can watch them playing it basically you kind of hold it on the side my hand here in the video kind of hold it on the side and then you're you're playing down up down up it's hard to see in this camera but um, there is a video clip of that and not on my site but through Hal Leonard I'll see if I can link to that so you're going to use, if you don't have a bow arm, which would be most of us, then you can use hand drums. And you play it, but holding that hand drum up on the side, so it's almost um, vertical, if you know what I mean. And your hand's going to go down, up, down, up. So at least you are teaching the action and the feel as though they had a bow arm in their lap. Then what, that should be easy for them. So again, we're going to teach the course by rote with a circle movement. Now, the circle movement I made up. It's not in the um, Irish Beat book. I just am a, a believer. Anytime I can get my kids up and moving, and it's moving with the music, either by beat, um, or in this case, by phrases and beat, then it just makes it a, a richer music educational experience for my kids. And so uh, this may even be uh, looking at move left with the side shuffle. So the kids are standing in a circle and they're side galloping. Riddicky roll and roll and way. Riddicky roll and roll and way. And then switch direction for the next phrase. Riddicky roll and roll and way. And then you're going to switch back to the left. Riddicky roll and roll and way. And then stepping on the beat but just on the first strong beat and pretending to have um, a big um, hammer, like they're it's, they're hammering the spike on a rail a railroad track, because that's what this song is about. Our railroad workers from Ireland um, working when they were immigrants and came over in the 1800s, kind of 1840s and up. There were a lot of Chinese and Irish immigrants, and so this is an Irish traditional song from working on the railway that they would sing. And so we're going to dig into that a little bit. So at this last line, Patty works on the railway. They're going to be all facing the circle still. They'll lift up their, their um, hammer. And they're on the first strong beat of each of those measures. 
they're going to swing it and hit that railway spike. Um, Patty works on the railway and taking uh, one step in place forward, so not moving anywhere, that strong step as though they're ledge hammer. And they'll continue to do that through the verse. Okay. So there's the movement. It's all spelled out in the lesson plan. Stepping in place with one foot and hammer rail spike. Then we're going to add our hand drums. We're going to do, I like to distribute two or four hand drums through four, whatever my numbers are in my room, and distribute them equally around the circle so that at the end of each chorus, the student passes that instrument to the left, and the next person in line then plays during the verse and the chorus, after the chorus, and gets passed to the left again. So it just keeps it equal, equally around the circle that an instrument's being passed, and as you guys already know, the students are expecting and excited about their turn to get to play the instrument. I love, even if I had 24 hand drums, I would not pass out 24 hand drums. I would rather pass out three or four, have them practicing that beat and feeling with body percussion because you know once they get an instrument in their hand, they get a little bit distracted. And uh, so we're giving them lots of practice time with with body percussion alone so that when they get the instrument, they're going to have better success of playing it correctly in the right timing. So that's how I handle the hand drums or a bow run if you have that. And of course, a bow run would be like a big, big deal when it's their turn to get play that. Um, at that point, for my kindergarten and grade one level, we're going to come back and sit down. We're going to create, as a class, we're going to create actions for each verse. Now, the verses are really wordy. There's too many words to, or for, for my case, I would want to do this lesson in one class, two classes at the maximum, but I would want my second class just to be kind of a review, a fun review of what we worked on last time. So therefore, I don't want to spend a lot of time teaching all the words by rote of the verses to the kids. The chorus is really easy for them pick, to pick up. So we're going to do that. But for the verses, I, the teacher, I'm going to sing the verses. And as a class, we're going to create actions that the kids can do while standing in the circle to kind of act out each verse. And it kind of tells a bit of a story um, of when the immigrants and a railroad worker was, was here. So we'll create those class, uh, actions for each verse as a class, and then and we'll practice as a group after we create one verse. Then we'll create the next verse, rehearse it, next verse, until we've done all five verses. Then we'll go back and sing the whole thing all the way through and have the challenge, do you think you can remember all the actions and try to put it all together? Grades two and three, this is where the, I really think the fun stuff starts to happen. And by the way, this could happen all the way up through fifth or sixth grade. They would have a blast doing this. So if you have the upper grades, this will work for them as well. Um, in that case, I'm going to divide my group of kids up into five small groups. And I'm going to assign each group their number, one, two, three, four, five, and that's the corresponding verse that that group is responsible for to create their own actions to go with the verse. So we'll always do the, the course movements the same as a class, but that one group will create their own actions for that verse. Then, um, and give them a time limit to work on that. Not an open-ended thing. You have five minutes to come up with whatever. And um, you'll have those words displayed up in front of them on the board. Or you can hand it out on a sheet of paper. I'm all about time efficiency. So I just keep it up on the board, and they have to turn around and look at them. Not a problem. They can do it. And then they work on those. Those actions, trying to come up with at least one action per um, phrase in a verse, and there's four phrases. Then I stop and I'll take to rehearse your group act right now. And so you give them that time. Time to practice it, but it needs to be pretty good juices chaos going on, not the I'm bored and I have too much time on my hands kind. That's the trick to those small groups. 
And then you bring them all back to the large circle, and we all do um, the course going left, then right, then left, stopping, big hammer, and then whichever small groups, group number one would be first, they're going to take one step inside the circle, do their actions, they don't have to be all together, um, they're going to do their actions and sing verse one, and then they'll step back out to the big circle and we go into the chorus as a big one. And then you repeat that for verse two, three, four, and five. It's a really cool effect. Um, you can transform that into a performance piece if that happens to work out for you as well. A really great, great lesson. Spring lesson plan three. Spring lesson plan three is St. Patrick's was a gentleman and harvest home. So remember, we were just dealing with six, eight time and feeling that pulse, that meter, and we have reinforced with the sound poem. If you've not, oh wait, wait, let me back up. In that last lesson, if you have the Irish Beat book, fabulous, you have the recording, you can order it really quickly, whatever, but you don't have to. I created this so it can be done all a cappella. Um, in fact, if I even have the book, I have the recording, but I would teach it just the way I have it outlined without any music. And then once we all have our actions, then I would put on the music and do it with the accompaniment um, after they worked it all out. But it's not necessary. It's just a nice added bonus, and the kids love it, of course. So it's not necessary to have that. Same way for this next one. St. Patrick was a gentleman comes out of the sound poems, but with permission from Hal Leonard for both of these, I asked them if I could share these lessons um, with you, and they gave me approval to do so. So sound poems is a collection of poems that Christy Carey Miller put together, and I love anything Christy does. She's still teaching, and it's all very interactive, very hands-on, um, really great things that work. And so St. Patrick was a gentleman, was, um, she chants the, the poem with a 6-8 lilt. St. Patrick was a gentleman and he came from decent people, and it goes on, but establish that 6-8 meter, which we practiced in the other lesson. And you'll notice that there is a highlighted or kind of a bolded word. Each one of those bolded words is a signal to the kids that they are going to play an instrument on that word. And that instrument is outlined here. So the first word we saw on the poem was St. Patrick was a gentleman. And the first one is gentleman. So on gentleman, one child or two children or however many, however you want to divide this up, is going to have a hand drum, gentleman. And then the next child that is assigned people, the next line, will do a will play a tambourine on tambourine. So you get the idea. So you have your kids assigned their instrument, and then you chant the poem in a 6-8 meter, and you have your kids uh, do that with you. So this is a, a really easy English language arts literacy tie-in that you can articulate, record, document, report, and all that good stuff. And every single one of these sound poems works the same way with a really detailed lesson plan of how to introduce it, how to um, get the instruments to the kids, and so forth. And I'm using that Christie's same plan in the lesson plan sharing with you. But it comes from Christy. Christy designed it. Um, on that note, before I leave this, this is a great one to do, obviously, on St. Patrick's Day week or leading up to it, your choice. But in this book, there's also um, holiday, there's a few holiday poems. There's, I believe, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. And there's the preamble, which oftentimes, especially for the younger kids, it's more difficult to find things that could be that tie-in. And as a side note, if you are worrying about Common Core State Standards, or your standards that want you to pull in English language arts, there is um, an emphasis that's supposed to be included, and that is on patriotic themes and literature and so forth. So one of her sound poems is the preamble done in the same way. So it's an easy way to do it already ready for you. 
The next part of the lesson, and you know, for your kids, what we just talked about will be plenty, but is the um, from Irish Speed again is Harvest Home. And this one would require to have a recording. And frankly, I have not went out and searched to see if I can find Harvest Home independently. I'm, it, I'm sure it might be out there, um, but it definitely is in this collection. And if this is something that you want to get and you want to get quickly, uh, I know that most of the music retailers have it and can have it to you within a day or two. So you could have this in plenty of time if you want to. And I, I can guarantee you will use it every year when you pull out Celtic music and you can use it at every grade level. Simplifying it for your younger kids and doing the full complexity with your older kids. This one involves wooden spoons. Now you can see in the book cover of Irish Beat, there are actual wooden spoons that are joined at the handle end, which are the easiest to use because you don't have to worry about them falling apart. If you do not have a pair of this or wooden spoons, Irish Celtic wooden spoons, you can use the larger kitchen spoons um, in place of them. Look, obviously, you won't have the same sound, but you can make that work. Um, and playing them with the the bowl of the spoon, I call it the the bottom bowl of it being back to back, and that's how you make that sound. Um, for my younger kids with their smaller hands, I even just use table or uh, not tablespoons, but teaspoons, because they can handle that easier than those big spoons. And for me, it's the fact that they're being involved, that they are playing on the beat, and um, so I use the teaspoons with my young kids. It's easier for them to manipulate, and I use the schools. I just ask to borrow enough for a classroom set whenever I'm using spoons in the classroom, and then I turn them to the kitchen, uh, the school kitchen. Okay, so you'll notice in Harvest Home, first we're going to teach them the how to play the spoons, how to put their fingers in between the handles, and the kids love doing this. They probably go home and drive their parents crazy, uh, but it's really fun. And then you're, they're going to tap the two spoons that are back to back, back down on their knee, and then up. So it just goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Make sure it's nice and steady, and practice that. Then when they move to, oops, I jumped a long way ahead. Sorry about that. Here we go. Um, and then the next part that they need to do with their spoons is a little bit trickier. So here with your kindergarten kids, you're probably not going to go to this. I know you're not. You're just going to do trying to play on the beat with those spoons. And in fact, if that seems to be too much of a challenge for them, then you're only going to have them play on the first beat, maybe like bump, bump. And then they can handle that. With your second graders and third graders, you can go ahead and have them do this. And they, it's amazing what they can do. So what this little pattern is saying, I'll try to get in the camera, all right, is you have one palm with an upward hand, and you're going to tap your spoons into that, then you're going to flip that hand over, you're going to tap your knee, and then when you come up, you tap the underside of that downward hand. So it's up, down, or up, knee, down. And it's really hard to show you in this. <laughs> so it's here knee and back up here knee back up and remember there are video clips out there and i will find the links to put with the lesson um some plans so you can find the legitimate planning and instructional ones i personally leave it at the spoons now my third graders fourth graders fifth graders and i move on and i will will add another instrument but with the spoons here's the format in the first section of the music, so notice that in the first section of the music, it's called the A section, and it's played twice. And so it's a little confusing here. So you have to take a moment and make sure the kids understand. The first section of music is the A section, and in that A section, we are going to do A, A, B, B. 
So the first section, A section, then has a subsection A, A, B, A. And for the A section, we're going to do this pattern, which is the easiest. But boy, if that becomes too easy, they love the challenge of this next one. And then this is the B section. So that, that funny one, up, knee, down, up, knee, down, up, knee, down. And then, and, um, and then you're ready to move on to the next section of music. I'll give you an idea. Here's the music. Um, once you learn it, it looks a little confusing at the beginning. Kids pick it up pretty quickly and especially the older ones and then they repeat that whole pattern three times and with each time um, it increases the opportunity to have the kids talk about the tempo change and name identify the tempo change so so on okay so there you go you can see the spoon pattern up here all right and then you'll see that it says the bovine now, if you want to add the bovon and have the kids divided, part of them doing spoons and part of them doing bovon, then it is here, um, here for you. The nice thing is, in the beginning of Irish Beat, it talks about more than just the bovon. I just, for these purposes, just talked about this. It talks about the tin whistle, um, the wooden spoons, and I think the Celtic harp. Tells you what it is, how to pronounce it, um, and how it's played in detail so that you can kind of study this and and give your example correctly for the kids. The bowron is going to play this um, pattern. So notice the, the stroke is on the beats one and three and then um, on two and four it goes up. So if it's those half notes, it's always going down. And if you're doing the quarter notes, down, up, down, up, down, up. So um, we've already talked about this three times. It's going to get faster and faster. And you can substitute hand drums instead of the bovon and kitchen spoons for the spoons part. And there you go. Spring lesson plan four. Spring lesson plan four. I have a mistake here. So I'm sorry about that. You'll notice it says five, so it shouldn't. It should say four, and four is the Flying Jazz Kitten. Um, this book right here, and this book is a fun one. I have some video clips available and easy for you to see at FreddyTheFrog.com. Uh, so here's a couple of the tips, but since I have the video clip on the site, I spend a lot of time on it. I'll just kind of glance through that. If it's my kindergarten or my first grade, I'm not going to divide my class into four groups. Instead, I'm going to have, I'm going to instruct all of the kids, excuse me, I'm going to 